Hello everyone, how's it going? To make it short and simple, this will be a reading vlog for Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stavewater. I have two editions here because I am complete trash. So this one is the actual Owl Crate edition. This is actually an inverted cover, so the actual cover is blue, while this one is the regular cover. I got both, just because. If you guys wanted to see my total reaction and unboxing for this book, um, you guys can go and check that one out. But all together, it kind of looks like this. Not too much of a change from the actual original cover, except for this beautiful artwork that was highly worth $50. Yes, folks, this book that came with a box was 50 bucks. Am I crying? No. Is my bank account crying? Probably. But that's, you know, to be earned and that's to be fair. It was worth it. So for this reading vlog, I don't even know how I'll be able to do this reading vlog because I literally just want to sit down and just read this book without any interruptions, without you know trying to angle the camera or whatnot or whatever. So we'll see how this goes. This book has literally been one of my most anticipated books of all time ever since like it was announced. I'll be reading it from this edition just because the other is has the cover on it. So and also just a little quick show and tell, but I also got the UK edition for the Starless Sea. Literally my third most anticipated read of 2019. So it was Ninth House, Call Down the Hawk, and Starless Sea. Call Down the Hawk and Starless Sea both were released on the same day. And this just arrived today and it is beautiful. Chef's Kiss. This one has sort of like a, I think, sturdier sort of feel to it than the US books, which is to be expected. This is what the end pages look like. Uh, the UK, Waterstones, had like a special thing going on where there were three colors of Starless Sea. It was a dark blue, maroon, and this light blue. And you didn't know which color you would you were gonna get. And I didn't know which color I was gonna get. It was a surprise they said, it was random, and I got this light blue. I was kinda hoping, Loki hoping for the maroon or the darker blue. This was my third choice. But you know what? Sometimes those kind of things just surprise us. And this did. It was a little bit oh, uh, oh well. But you know what? That's okay. I cannot wait to start this one. Now that I have it in my actual hands, I was literally going to debate reading this book first and start a reading vlog for this and then read Call Down the Hawk. However, Call Down the Hawk, it's just, I need to read that first. This is like another standalone uh, from Erin Morgenstern. This is, I believe, her second book that she has written so far in the past eight years since her first book came out. So... This also has another special place in my heart just because her first book is another one of my faves. So you know what folks, we got a lot going on here and a lot riding on these books. Okay, so with that being said, I just want to give you guys a little introduction and I think I'll just periodically leave the camera right here just for now and come back in and update on you guys on what's happening. However, there will be a live show detailing, I guess, all the spoilery discussions and just in more in-depth thought with a live show. If you guys didn't know, I co-hosted the Raven Read Along. I guess we didn't really make a full official announcement for Call Down the Hawk, but you know what? It's, I don't know, we'll figure it out. So there will be a live show sometime in the definite future, I guess in the first week of December, just because the, the book just came out this week um, when I'm filming this. I will go ahead and get into this now and I will see you guys on the flip side. Hello, we are literally back 30 minutes later and the fucking prologue already just, I'm on the first chapter and <sighs> this world is so interesting just because we are now branching out somewhere that isn't in just centered Virginia and that is such an interesting, I can't even begin to describe this world. It's so interesting, I guess. I don't know how I'll be able to talk about not being able to talk about some maybe some things that are like the general things that are in the book. The things that you know when you read like the plots, the outline, I guess, the summary. I'll try my best to just edit out any major spoilers, but if you really don't want to be spoiled, maybe I suggest you not watch this reading vlog. Okay, we'll, we'll keep on reading now. Um, I, I can't, I just, here we go. Chapter two. So, just a little quick update. Chapter five, and Adam Parrish just made his first appearance. And I'm just, my babies are back. It's just so surreal, just sitting and reading about them again. Like I would have, you know, after the, the fourth Raven cycle book, The Raven King, I never would have thought we would revisit these characters or this world again. And here I am reading 
about some of them in college and I just <sighs> getting so emotional but like it's such can't begin to describe this feeling you know I get to experience magic in its truest and purest form and it couldn't be any happier I'm so excited so Adam just made his first appearance and that's all I'm gonna say but all the feels and reading about Ronan talking about Adam you know in the Raven King it was like you know, it was, it was there. But this one, it's just so much more because there develops more in their relationship. So it's, it's great. It's great. I'm so happy for them and they're just so beautiful and I love them. So that's just a little quick update on that. Quick side note as well. Um, you know, some of the interesting thing about this book are the new characters that we're being introduced to and I just can't help but just feel suspicious of everybody. I don't know whether to like them, whether to hate them. I don't know how I feel about them yet. And, you know, we're too early in the stages to tell what what they're going to do and how they will affect the course of the story and the main characters. So I just want everyone to be saved. I, I, I know that, you know, not everyone can be happy, especially, like, in real life, you know, relating to that. I'm t specifically talking about Ronan and Adam's relationship. I just... I don't want anything bad to happen to them. I know that they won't break up because Maggie literally said that she isn't going to destroy a relationship that she spent four books building upon. So hopefully nothing too drastic will happen. But I, I, I am expecting some, you know, leeway, some, you know, tumbles here and there. But I'm not expecting some big dramatic, see ya, fuck you, I'm never gonna see you again. Nothing like that. And I don't think that's, I don't know. I know that for a fact that it isn't going to happen. I have no idea what's going to happen in this book because I literally don't know anything about it except the mythology that we're going to find out more about Ronan and his dreams and his relationship with Adam and new characters and what they can bring. So that's pretty much it so far. Even five to six chapters in, I still don't know where the course of the story is going and I'm okay with that so far. It's just a really big breath of fresh air just in this world again. So that's that. It's all about the bumps in your heart. Okay, so... I had to pause it just for a second because I won't say who or, you know, the context of it, but there's a character in here wearing a tweed vest and I just have a hard time wrapping my mind on that. I just, I cannot. A tweed vest. That seems just so uncharacteristically uncharacter-like that I'm just like, I need to look up what someone wearing a tweed vest would look like. I can't fathom someone wearing a tweed vest. I don't even know what it looks like. So I'm looking up on Google, tweed vest. And you know what? Not gonna lie, it's sort of attractive. So, you know, I take it back. I rescind what I said earlier, um, insultingly about that character wearing the tweed vest. But in case you guys were wondering, this is sort of like what they sort of look like, the tweed vest, I guess. Classy and very stylish. Some people can pull it off. I'm not that person who can pull off a tweed vest, but uh, I dig it, you know? It's kind of hot. Okay, I, I agree with the choice. It's very appropriate and fitting. So I take it back what I said. Just a quick update. So it is now almost 2 a.m. I am 30 chapters in, which is 185 pages. I'm almost halfway there. So far, it's been really interesting because this feels like a completely different book, I think, away from the whole Raven cycle, and I think that's a good thing. And also, like, not what I was expecting for it to be, but so far so good. I'm really enjoying where the story is going. I don't know where it's actually going, which direction it's heading. I have more questions than answers now. I wanted some answers to the questions I had from the last book um, in the Raven cycle. Some of them have been answered, you know, some, some things that I've read and seen um, interesting so far. But other than that, like, to be honest, the new characters, I don't really care about them that much. I don't know if that's a bad thing, but we're being introduced to several new key 
key characters, I assume, and new terminology, um, which is really interesting in this dreamology sort of setting and world and aspect and sort of things. Every time I'm reading about a new character and their POV and their story, I'm just like, that's great, but I really want to read more about Ronin and more about Adam and everything. This book is like more mature, I think, and more grown up. Makes sense. I'm getting a little tired. I probably won't be staying up and reading this for the whole night. So I probably won't be staying up and reading this book in one one sitting. Mackie said somewhere, I can't remember if she stated this on Twitter or somewhere, that you don't have to read The Raven Cycle to understand the first book in the Dream Trilogy. And I have to disagree with her because I feel like you're missing so many key points and characters and what happens, like in sort of like the context. I feel like you really won't connect at all with the story itself, even with the main character of Ronin, if you don't read The Raven Cycle because you you don't understand what's there. You don't understand all the layers. You just, you're thrust into this weird world without any explanation. And it's just so strange. I think it would be really off-putting and really confusing overall if you don't read The Raven Cycle. And I get that, you know, there are people who don't read The Raven Cycle might be interested in reading this, but I feel like you won't be able to get it. You won't be able to understand who these characters are with the relationships that they have with each other. So I think that The Raven Cycle is a huge backbone for the characters um, that we're reading about. Well, the, the old characters. So... Just a thought. Okay, so I am on page 235, and you should know that so far in the whole book, that is my favorite scene. Just know that on page 235, that page, that whole chapter alone, is my favorite. Adam is still the same, but yet he's still so different, and still so very hot. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm um, not gonna say anything more. But my favorite scene, I just, I'm going to keep on reading. It's 2.26 a.m. right now, but I'm still going to keep on reading. I forgot to mention is that, yes, I do realize that you don't need to read The Raven Cycle in order to fully understand and read this book. However, I wish Maggie wrote this book in a way where I wasn't, you know, reading this book for the first time, this world for the first time. I wish it was more of like a continuation, like not a fifth book exactly. It's a different book, but also that in order to understand this, you had to read The Raven Cycle because I felt like I would have felt like I would have had a stronger relationship with the characters and the story overall instead of saying, oh, I already understand how that works, but I am being spoon fed again, sort of like the information in a less expanded sort of sense and just like in a very quick sort of manner in a straightforward manner like oh this happened and this was given for an example like um this person has something an object and this person was given by another person new readers coming to this world may not know what the context of that story is but i do and i wish that it wasn't explained so blandly or over again for me to understand or remember and, you know, I wish it was just more of a continuation, more than a, a new thing. But, but still so far so good. I still understand everything. So, just a quick update. It is basically now 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm exhausted at this point, but I'm on chapter 74. I'm only a, ch a few chapters left finishing. There's so much to take in. Um... But more on that later, just a little quick update of me like finishing this much of the book. It's been a journey. I have so much things to say, but for now I'm just going to finish the book and sleep on it and update you guys tomorrow because it is late. Uh, so yeah, I'm about to finish this book. I'm not looking forward to it, but for now we're in the end game. Just an update on that. It is now five in the morning. I'm practically dead at this point, but I have finally finished Call Down the Hawk. I'm just really confused by the ending overall. I'm really conflicted, but not in a bad way. It's more like what just happened. I guess I'll just have to sleep on it, but other than that, speechless. Do I love it? Do I like it? Do I hate it? I'll just have to sleep on this and thought process. I'm not making any sense right now. 
It is 5 fucking a.m. in the morning. So, until then, good night. Hello, everyone. So, this is the last clip, I guess, of the final vlog. I just woke up from a really long nap. I know I look super sexy right now. Please excuse this bedhead of mine. Um, so, it is now the next day. After a long, good night's rest and just thinking about it and everything, I decided to give Call Down the Hawk 4 out of 5 stars. 4 out of 5 stars is an insanely still good rating. Why isn't it a 5 star like the rest of the other books in the Raven Cycle? I think for just for the context of non-spoilers and the fact that we probably might have a live show for this book, um, I'm just gonna stick to like the basics for now. But I feel like there was a lot of things that were thrown at me that I wasn't really expecting and not really in the best way, I think. There were things that I thought were resolved from the Raven Cycle, you know, that were sort of like brought up. Do you know when there's a sequel to, or a reboot, to like an old classic that you love, a movie, and you watch the reboot or the sequel and a lot of care has been given to the sequel and just a lot of process and just a lot of things going behind it. It was sort of like that for this one and you know a lot of people they can see the hard work that goes into the sequel but at the same time it's still not as great or as good as the original and i i feel like everyone will always compare this i mean obviously because it is a spinoff but it takes place in the same world as the raven cycle and you have so much of these characters that you build on and you're focusing on one of them but i don't know i feel like there were a lot of things that could have gone differently for me and I was not expecting not to love um, some of the characters as much. Like the new characters, I really could honestly not care about them. If, if Honestly, this book probably would have been a three star out of five stars if it weren't for some of the scenes, the interactions um, with Ronan and Adam. Honestly, I'm only giving it four out of five stars because some of my favorite scenes in the whole series is in this book with Ronan and Adam. And I feel like one biggest crucial thing, I get that this book is about Ronin, but I feel like I was also reading a book about an entirely different person in a way. Like he was sort of different where we left him off in The Raven King and where he starts now. And I get that there's some time and everything for growth and whatever. And we get to know more about him that he's actually a cinnamon roll. Like, yeah, I get it. But like at the same time, it was a little off-putting, but like I'm not putting, I'm not like condemning it. Like, I, I can see why, and I agree with it, and I like him now as a character even more. But at the same time, he was just a little different to me. Adam, as well, vastly different. Like, are they gonna ruin the image that I had of both of them from the Raven Cycle? I think not. But at the same time, it's just like a little... I don't know, it's just something different. I guess more mature, but at the same time, it's like... not. Hard to explain, but I feel like there were two different people that I was reading about a little bit once I got more into the book. It was more cohesive and everything, but at the same time, the best scenes in here were with Adam and Ronan, and there were not nearly as enough. I, literally, I can count, like, there were, I think, four to five scenes, at most, with just the two of them together in this, like, almost 500-page book. So I was a little, no, now I was a little, I was vastly disappointed. I wanted more, and I get that this book is about Ronan and everything, and, like, the fallout of his dreams, and the consequences, and the history behind it and everything, and we'll talk about that later because I still wasn't given enough answers as to what the actual heck is happening in this book, but there were enough scenes with two of my favorite my, my favorite character of all time. And I get that he's in college and everything, but at the same time, I'm just like, <sighs> however, the scenes that were with Adam and Ronan, so fucking worth it. Was it really worth, warranted, the spinoff? I think yes. Honestly, there's so much more that could go into the sequel that I'm really excited to see. But let's talk about like the backstory and the history and the context of the consequences of like Ronin's dreamings. I think it's really interesting, but not in the way where I was expecting. Like I was expecting for it to be going in one direction and then Maggie wrote and took it out and put it in another direction. I'm not making any sense whatsoever. It's just a really hard to contain everything, what I'm feeling. But I don't know, I did not care for any of the new characters. I didn't care for any of the other characters that were introduced into this book. I felt like this book, even though I want it to be longer, it could have been shorter. I really enjoyed this book, sort of. No, I did enjoy this book, but at the same time, I also did not like some aspects of it. And the ending was so underwhelming. Okay, it does leave on a cliffhanger, but not as a big cliffhanger as you would expect or it would seem. So I'm just going to leave you off with that. I guess those are my non-spoilery things about this book. 
Um, at its core, three to five stars, everything with Ronan and Adam, the familiarities of it, four to five stars. I guess overall, I guess you could say I gave this book four to five stars. Um, everything else was all right. And there are just some big revelations that honestly, I don't know, I guess would seem to make sense if you never read the Raven Cycle. But I feel like if you did not read the Raven Cycle whatsoever, you would miss out so much. It would not make a lot of sense. Like, Ronan's talking about his friends, and if you didn't read the Raven Cycle, you would be like, well, who the fuck is Gansey? Or who's Blue? And why are they so pivotal to, like, his relationship, like, when he's such an asshole to everybody else? Like, you won't get it, you won't understand it, and I feel like it, it's it's not like where you can read Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo without reading the Grisha Trilogy, which a lot of people have done, but I feel like if you did that with this book, it sort of wouldn't make any sense to do so. And I feel like this honestly was made more for people who like, read The Raven Cycle, I think, but four to five stars, some of my favorite scenes in here containing Ronan and Adam and worth it. However, I didn't really care about the characters. And as for the story, I felt like, I don't know, I guess, I guess I'll talk more about the story and the spoilers in the live show. This is like a continuation of the Raven Cycle read-along that I did like a month ago with Kayla, Kat, and Zoe. Update you guys on Twitter and Instagram when the exact date will be. But for now, I enjoyed it. It's not my favorite, however, it does contain my favorite scenes. But overall, I'm just, I guess, a little underwhelmed. Maybe give me, like, a week to process this, and maybe I'll be like, okay, I accept what's in it, and I'm happy with it, and I'm content with it. And I guess that's what a lot of people have the same feelings for The Raven King, the last book in The Raven Cycle. For me, I immediately loved The Raven King. But for this one, I'm just, I'm not really liking the, some of the direction the book is going in. But you know, that's okay. And... I have to wait a whole fucking year for the sequel. This is going to be a trilogy. So, I'll be 25 when the sequel comes out. I don't know what that says, but holy shit. Don't think I have anything else to say. I think that pretty much covered it. Honestly, this reading vlog was sort of pointless. I could literally could have just given you guys a like book review. A, a, like a non-spoiler book review at this point. But whatever. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this book. If you guys exceeded your expectations. I've seen a lot of really great reviews saying people loved it. Um how it just was so much better than they initially thought. And I, I could see that. I can agree and to some extent. So uh, that is it for my uh, reading vlog. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you guys all soon with a new video.